My name's Alan Hart and today I'm going to show you how a combi boiler works. This is going to be an in-depth video. I'm going to take the components out and I'm going to show you how they work and maybe help with fault finding. Um, show you the different components in the boiler as well. Um, from fans to gas valves etc sequence and also we're going to do a little bit of testing so what I'll do is I'll show you how diverter valves and diverter valve heads work as well so yeah uh, first of all what I'd like to do I'd like to thank Trade Help Trade Help has sponsored this video they, they've got no influence on the content of the video but they've helped me to be able to do this video today um, so yeah Trade Help is, a, is an app for gas engineers and it allows you to do invoicing for customers the app is free they also have an option where you can offer finance and there's there's like a tool um, app as well so you can do gas rating and things like that so yeah so check out the uh, trade help app and you can download that onto your onto your phones right okay let's let's have a look let's have a look in the boilers it's a bit hard to know where to start really um, but I'm just going to try my best just to explain it in the best way I can so what does a boiler what does a combi boiler do what do you want it to do so when you turn your heating on you turn your heating control up you want to get central heating and when you turn your hot tap on you want to get hot water so how does a combi boiler achieve that so first of all if we turn the heating on what happens is there's a link in the boiler here and it sends it tells tells the board that you want heating and then your pump your pump will fire it'll go through its sequence for the gas and water from your pump will start pumping round your central heating it'll pump around this heat exchanger in the top here and then the boiler will fire up and then that will send heat then to the radiators so it's got a pipe at the back there and that pipe there goes into this into the heat, heat exchanger and it goes round here and down here and that will go round the heating and when you run your hot tap again it, more or less the same idea what you've got the pump will run again but what I'll do now is I'll just zoom in and I'll just show you because we, ne we need to have a sensor that senses that you've opened the hot tap so I'll just show you that now so I've just removed the pump now so we can see but what we've got there I've got a Hall effects sensor there I'll so just turn that off and that what that does is As that spins in there, it sends a signal to there, and then that tells the boiler to work. So that's that's telling us that we've got flow through the boiler. What I'll do now, I'll just go inside and I'll show you that on a live boiler and show you how that works. So in the back of this boiler here, we've got a hauler sensor. Um, if you see there, look, it's just lit up. So we've run the hot tap. Just turn hot tap back off Luke and then when we turn the hot tap off we can see it's gone back off again. So that's the Hall effect sensor and that's that, that would be on there and then what happens is your cold water mains comes into here this senses it this turns around it gives like a magnetic field on here and that tells the boiler, tells the boiler to work. So that's that would be in there. So that's told the boiler to work now. So we've got cold water going through here. Now the difference now is we wouldn't want to mix the central heating water with the water that you're gonna have at your tap. So we have to have another heat exchanger here. So I'll just show you that now. So in the back of the boiler, we would have what's called a plate heat exchanger, which is just in the back of the boiler there. 
might be in different places, in different boilers. But how that would work is you'd have four pipes on there. So one part of it, with this one it's the bottom one here, these. One part of it would have the central heating water going through, if you like, or the, boil, or the water from inside the heat exchanger in the boiler. And then the other side would have cold water going in. And then it would transfer heat via this heat exchanger. And it would come out of this side hot and go to your hot taps. And what that has in, inside there, it has little plates. Um, the metal doesn't touch each other, just loads and loads and loads of metal plates. It's a bit hard to show you and I've not got one that's cut up. Um, but if I could show you cut up, you could see. And what that does is it doesn't allow the water to mix from one to another. Sometimes when you've got a boiler that's the, um, the pressure's going up all the time on the boiler and you've disconnected your filling loop, sometimes these could be split inside. And what that'll do is it'll allow itself to top up and cause problems. But that, that's that's not part of this video but just as a um yeah if we have a look at the plate heat exchanger at the back that's where your four pipe four holes are so there's one there one on this side and then same on this side and then what you need to do then because we need to control which way the water goes so if we have it on heating or hot water we have a diverter valve here and we have a diverter cartridge so what I'll do is I'll take that out now and I'll show you how this works so that's your diverter cartridge out of the boiler so when it's in the boiler you can just clip that off and then that comes apart sometimes tops of them pins there leak different boiler manufacturers use different methods of diverting the water um, and also different methods of sensing the hot water um, so I'm just showing you on this particular boiler. So you have a diverter to head and then you've got the um, the cartridge and what happens in that cartridge it moves there's a pin in there which I'll show you now thanks to I'd like to thank Roy from Baxi because he just showed me a method of me being able to show you how um, how I can show you this work. So at the moment this is in the hot water position the pin in it is pushed out now what we'll do is I'm going to put some power onto here and that's going to show us that now we're asking for it to go into heating I'll just show you what happens to the valve I don't know if you could just see the valve there so the valve has just moved and now I'll show you so this will stay in its last position but now I'll show you if we want to put it back into hot water what happens so now we're going to make it look like we want it to go back into the hot water position. So if we just check that valve. So that's the diverter, the diverter cartridge. And what that's doing inside there, that's just moving up and down as I've just shown you. And it allows the water to rather go around the plate heat exchanger which then will pass over to the hot water let you have hot water or if it's in the other uh, other direction it'll go around the central heating now what we also need when when the heat comes on we also need something that will control the heat obviously we wouldn't want the gas to go on full and then the water be boiling in the system so we also have Temperature sensors or for misters, which is that, and that controls the temperature. So you can have a domestic hot water sensor or you can have heating heating sensors as well. And again that will control the temperature and that'll let the board know what the temperature is and it'll adjust the gas valve um, to give you the right gas. And the right temperature. The next thing we need to know is as, as water in your central heating gets hot the water the hot water will expand and if we've got a boiler if we, this pressure gauge is normally on one as the water gets hot this will start going up a little bit 
Now, what we have to make it to, to absorb the expansion, we have what's called an expansion vessel. Now, if you remember an old style heating system, we would have a header tank and that header tank would take the expansion. But in, in modern boilers, we have an expansion vessel and in an expansion vessel, one side of it is air and then it has a diaphragm in like a rubber, rubber um, membrane there. And then the other side is the central heating water and that allows the water in the system to expand. Now, with an old open vent system, if the pressure got high, then it, it, it would just, it, the tank would allow the, the, the water to go up in the tank. If, if on a combi boiler, this pressure goes too high, if it goes round to three, then what we have is, we have a PRV, and we call, sometimes we call it a blow off valve, and that will allow water to come out of the system. One of the issues we have is if if the if that blow off has opened, sometimes the what the what reset, and they can get muck on them, and you, you may need to change them. That's normally it's normally because rather customers put too much pressure in, and they've left filling loop open, and they've put too much pressure in, or it could be it might be at one bar. They might have topped it up to one bar and they might have done a good job of that of maintaining it. But the expansion vessel may have lost its charge and it may not have no air in the expansion vessel. Now that could just be down to lack of servicing and it could also be a faulty expansion vessel. So on a service you would need to check that and pump it back up. I normally pump them up to one bar um, on, on a service and then and then the expansion vessel will be fine then. So we've spoken about the water side of, of the system now. If you have any questions about the water side of it, please ask them in the comments below. And now we'll have a look at the gas, the gas side of it. So we've asked the boiler to be on. The, it's gone through its sequence. The gas valve's opened. So you've got your gas valve on this particular one, gas valve is on the bottom here and then you've got your fan and on this boiler what this does the fan controls how much gas goes into the boiler and that will then go into the heat exchanger I've just got um, I've just got um, a burner here this has actually got the gas valve this is out of a this is out of a Wiesmann this one but this has got the fan that's got the fan there and it's got the gas valve and it's all connected onto the burner all as one piece and what would happen with this is the gas and the air would mix to the correct uh, mixture and that would depend on again going back to your temperature sensors how much how much gas you need and how much heat you need and then that would come through this burner here and then that would heat the inside of the heat exchanger. I'll open, a, I'll open a boiler up and I'll show you the inside of a heat exchanger now. So again with this we've got the burner and we've got the fan and on this one the gas valve is down here. I'll just zoom in and I'll show you the inside of the heat exchanger. If we look inside the heat exchanger of what's what's going to happen in here, as I say the burner allows the heat to come out into here and then this has got some pipes in here and what you've got, you've got a floor pipe there at the back and that goes into the heat exchanger round, round here and then it comes back out on this pipe here. So what it's doing is it's transferring the heat from in here into the water. You can get all different types of heat exchangers in boilers. This one that I've got here, this is out of a Worcester. Now, 
With this one, we can take the burner out of the front and we can get into it and service it fairly easy. Um, this is a Worcester one and with a Worcester one, it has some connections on top and it's downward facing on this one. So it's a little bit more tricky to get in. Um, sometimes as well, it has some baffles that go in there and they can sometimes be a bit difficult to get out. So there's, there's all different types of heat exchangers, all different types of gas valves, fans, etc, etc. But mainly they all work in a very similar way. So you've got gas, you've got water and you've got power and you, you need to trans transfer the heat from the gas to the water so that you get heating or so that you get hot water. And then there needs to be some sort of mechanism to transfer it from or a diverter valve to turn it from one way to another. And that's with most boilers. These, these slight exceptions, there's some heat exchangers that have the hot water pipe, if you like, goes directly through the heat exchanger. So it doesn't need a diverter valve. It, it doesn't need a plate heat exchanger on them either. Um, they're on the intergas boilers. I think some of the old, some of the old Becerras as well. Um, there, were, there were another one I can't remember now off the top of my head, but the really old boiler that had, had that technology as well. Um, so yeah, there's all different types, all different types of boilers. But this just gives you a little bit of an insight into into this type of boiler. Uh, I hope you found this this video of some use. If you've got any questions, please ask them in the comments below um, and I'll try my best to, to answer any questions I can. Um, if you could do me a favour, if you could like the video and also if you could subscribe, that would be really nice. Um, I'll add a link up here somewhere to, for you to subscribe and then I'll add some more videos down here to different videos. I'll also add um, on these videos here, I'll add a link to the Trade Help um, YouTube channel as well. Thanks for watching.